Today we're talking about God in the spirit form, uh, often called the Holy Ghost. As we talked about last week, a lot of times when you mention the, the word ghost, even to adults, it just causes this, you know, panic or this fear. Uh, as, as young kids, we're taught to, to fear that, that, that name, that word, ghost. You know, I talked about last week, you know, the, the ghost under the bed or the ghost in the closet. And, and parents were even guilty of that, amen, just to try to get our kids to stay in bed and be quiet and go to sleep. Or the ghost is going to get you. But the ghost that we're talking about over the next few weeks... It's the farthest thing from scary in that way. The word from the Old Testament translated as spirit is ruach, which means a wind, breath, or a violent exhalation. Okay, it's something that is full of power. In the New Testament, the Greek word is translated as pneuma, which means a current of air or a blast of breath and a strong breeze. The Holy Spirit is like the wind of God. Sometimes he comes like a gentle breeze, and sometimes it is like a rushing mighty wind. And anything in between. So today I want to talk to you about the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, we see the power of the Spirit working in a lot of different ways. And I think sometimes when we, when we read the Old Testament, we read these stories and we think, you know, we, well, we tend not to think about the Holy Spirit being at work because... In the New Testament, it's pretty definitive. You know, Jesus comes to his disciples, which we're going to read some scripture about this here in just a little bit, and, and says, you know, last week, we remember we said, Jesus said, it is better if I go, so I, my Father will send him, will, fit, will send the Holy Spirit. So when we, when we think about the Holy Spirit working and moving, it's a little easier to grasp that in the New Testament because we read about it frequently and we think for some reason that he wasn't moving or working in the Old Testament. But remember the Bible says right early on that the Holy Spirit was there at creation. So right from the beginning, he, he is, he's a part, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament even, he was working in so many different ways. The Holy Spirit one time gave jo Joseph skill to rule over Egypt. Somebody that had no leadership skills whatsoever, probably had no business whatsoever leading in any capacity, let alone this capacity, and to take him in the way that he took him from his family in that whole situation after he had said in his dream, remember God had given him a dream, and said, this is what's going to happen. Told these brothers, I'm going to rule over you. And that's what caused these brothers to whip his tail and leave him for dead. But then he ends up in that place. That's the working of the Holy Spirit. That is him moving in that situation. The Spirit gave Joshua military power. One time the Spirit gave two unknown men the power to work in their crafts. The Holy Spirit gave words to prophets to speak prophetically over God's people. One time the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and gave him power to lead the Abyssalites into battle. In Judges chapter 14, verse 6, as hard as it is to believe, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson in so much power that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands. That's the power of God. That is the power of God. Of course, we see other instances where lions' mouths were shut. Where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace and should have been burned before they even got thrown in there. Yet not even a hair on their body was singed. And when those looked inside, they happened to see four instead of three. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, this ghost has been moving the whole time. Even throughout the Old Testament. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, or 10, verse 6, excuse me. The words of Samuel to Saul said this, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. You will be changed into a different person. Now that's something right there significantly that we all need to grab a hold of. And see, part of the working of the Holy Spirit is to change us. To change us to become more like God, to more like the, the, the person that God created us to be. But man, sometimes we just get in the way with that. Because we don't see the significance in that change, or we don't see the reason for that change, or that change that the Holy Spirit is trying to work inside of our lives. We, we just can't grab a hold of it. It just doesn't fit what we necessarily think we are supposed to be or we want to be. Now, the New Testament sees the power of the Holy Spirit everywhere. 
Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 1, Mary wondered how this would be, and she said, how will this be? Since I'm a virgin, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That was the working of the Holy Ghost in that situation. When Jesus gave his life for our sins on the cross, the Bible says, in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, it says, the Son of God was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised his followers that he would send them a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Luke 24, 24, 49, it says, And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. That gift was sent to us specifically because Jesus recognized that we would need the Holy Spirit in our lives to do the things that we were going to have to do, to face the things that we were going to have to face, to get through the situations we were going to have to get through. He also understood that with that came the power to worship, the power in prayer. I mean, I could go on and I could go on and I could go on. With this comes power. And it's all available today to those who believe in Jesus. It's the promise given to us by God. The problem is Christians, we say we believe in Jesus. Last week we talked about maybe there actually is this ghost. Maybe he does some pretty cool stuff that I just don't know and understand, but I just don't know. I don't know that I get this. I don't know that I want to get this. And, and those are honest statements because let's just all be real. Even as Christians, let's just be real. Things that we don't fully understand um, it, it sometimes, it, it just, it's, it's hard to kind of go there, right? It's hard to, to want to go there. People who don't understand something will usually do one of two things. Number one, they will do all they can to learn more about it so they can begin to understand. I mean, and that doesn't matter what it is, right? I mean, if we're trying to figure something out, we want to understand something. Yesterday, you guys know I've told this story. I've had more problems with my boat in the last, it's been bad. About like I'm having with this mic on my head. It's been frustrating. Not to mention, it's cost a lot of stinking money. So we finally get it fixed. We're out there yesterday, Taylor and I. Things are going well. Catching a lot of fish. Get ready to move to the next spot and turn over the key and nothing. Nothing. Like, this isn't, there's not the buzzer, nothing. Nothing. So back there, we're looking at the connections. Everything's tied. It looks good. Nothing. Everything else on the boat is working fine. Just can't start it. Wind's starting to blow about 20 plus, white caps, and here we go, floating down the lake. So I'm climbing underneath the, the, the console and, and the little starter module thing. It's got all these wires. The one wire that leads to my starter is broke don't ask me how it broke it just snapped right in two underneath the rivet and it wasn't where you could screw it back on it was a rivet and it snapped i had an internal moment my wife asked me yesterday did you lose it and i said nope not on the outside she said are you holding it in i said yep she said well make sure it doesn't come out at me It was a moment. Now, this is something that I could have gotten on Google. I could have purchased the thing. I could have figured out how to fix it and put it back in. But I was so stinking mad, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. So I loaded it up, thanks to some good help from a great friend, took it to the boat guy and said, fix it again. I could have made the decision to learn as much about that as I possibly could. I could have, and I could have got it done. And a lot of times, when things we don't know, that's what we will do. But what happens, I said there were two ways that people respond to things they don't understand, right? The second way is they just walk away from it. They just walk away. (laughs) And I walked away from that. I was was ready to blow it up. Lacey said, you don't want to do that. I said, oh, yes, I do. (laughs) 
I don't care how much I owe on it. I just want to blow it up. Brett's over there laughing because he knows, man. He gets it. Oh. We either want to learn as much as we can to begin to understand, or we just want to walk away. I don't want to deal with that. I just want to walk away. Even if understanding it could greatly benefit our lives. See, me understanding that little piece probably would save me about 50 or 60 bucks. I don't care if it saved me 500. I wouldn't fix it. <laughs> you just walk, just walk away. And spiritually, I know we're kind of laughing and you're laughing. You've been laughing at my boat demise for weeks. So <laughs> maybe God just wants me to have more stories on Sunday morning. But with the Holy Spirit, this ghost, we'll either choose intentionally to learn as much as we possibly can and grow as much as we possibly can, to be used as much as we possibly can, to have him work through us. We'll do that intentionally, or we'll walk away. We'll just walk away from that part. We'll walk away from that aspect. We'll walk away from that part of what God has for us. By not searching out what his power of the Holy Spirit can do for us, we are going after this life in a way that we don't have to. It's like this. We're wanting to build a basement, building a home. We're going to start with the basement. Now, we could go out and we could put on a pair of work gloves and we could grab a shovel and we could start digging. And those of you that know here in the good old Missouri soil, you're going to be digging for a long, stinking time if that's how you plan on digging out your basement foundation. I remember one time in Nicaragua, we dug out a foundation. We were of this, this, this huge building and, and, and we laid the foundation. This stuff was like dust. We literally dug the entire foundation. Vernon, you remember that? You were there. You remember that? It was dust, wasn't it? You could take a shovel and you could shove that thing in the ground. It was, it was volcanic ash is what it was. And we dug that whole foundation in a day. And this building was every bit as big as two-thirds of this building here. It was massive. In Missouri, that ain't happening. But you could do it. You could take those gloves and that shovel and you could go out there day after day after day and eventually at some particular point in time after a whole lot of sweat and blisters and, and pain, you'd get it done. Or you could use a bulldozer and a backhoe and you could dig that dude in, in a few hours. And sometimes that's kind of how we do this thing called life. We grab the gloves and grab the shovel and listen, I'm not, uh, sometimes you got to do that. So, but it's just like we could, we have this or we can have the Holy Ghost bulldozer over here. But for some reason we pick this and we keep working and we keep, do, and it's just when God said, I got this thing over here, you guys could be using this, make it a whole lot easier and do it the way that it was designed to do it. But for some reason we just kind of walk away from that. We just leave that sitting there. And don't utilize this power that we have been given. The source, to understand it, to use it, been given this gift to accomplish the things God has for us in our lives. The Bible says in Romans 8, chapter 11, I shared a little bit of this last week. It says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. The same Spirit. Because I know that's hard to grasp. I get it. It's the same Spirit. It's the same power. Ephesians 1, 19 through 20 says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. It's the same spirit with the same power has been given to each and every one who accepts Christ as their personal savior. To those who believe you have this access. Being filled with the powerful spirit of God, you have the ability to live in a supernatural life in the middle of a very natural world. But so many times we leave that bulldozer off to the side. So many of us just pick our shovels and our gloves up and we struggle without this power. 
We'll go to Acts chapter 1 really quick. Chapter 4 says, on one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them, he gave them this command. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father promised. But you've heard me speak about, for, God, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, what does this mean? The Greek word translated as baptized is baptizo, which means immerse. It means immerse. Immerse means to completely surround or cover. That's completely, no gaps. It is a complete Complete surrounding, complete covering. And, and, and this was Jesus speaking at this particular time. He says, in a few days you will be baptized or you will be immersed or you will be completely surrounded or covered by the Holy Spirit. That's why, okay, now when we baptize people here in the big blue tank, it is, it's complete. You know, it's the whole thing, man. It's, it's every bit or nothing, right? Complete immersion. And it's the same thing here. This is what Jesus said. He didn't just say you're going to be filled with the Spirit. He said you're going to be baptizo. You're going to be immersed. You're going to be surrounded. You're going to be covered by the Spirit. Immersed in this power. What's going to happen when this takes place? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power to tell people about Jesus. Power to tell people about Jesus. Whether that's spoken or whether that's lived or whether that's worshipped or whether that's prayed. You will... God understood... That for this message to go on, for us to become who He created us to be, the Holy Spirit, this ghost, is who we needed. So when the Holy Spirit comes and immerses you, you'll receive power. Now this word power comes from the Greek word dunamis. We get the word dynamite from this word. Dynamite, this explosion, this force, this miraculous power, this explosive power of God. When it comes on you, it will baptize, immerse you, and you will have power, the explosive power of God. The same powerful spirit is available to each and every one of us today. Now, this morning for just the next little bit, I just want to look at four quick things. Now, these are just four quick things. That what the Holy Spirit, the power provides. Now, I do want to tell you today that, that I'm going to take you so far today, and then we're going to pick back up next week, and I'm going to take you just a little bit farther. And we're going to get a little bit more into some specifics as, as it pertains to what God's Word says about, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and those types of things. But today, I want to look at four quick things the Holy Spirit gives us His power to accomplish in our lives. And the very first one is what we just read, to share Christ boldly. To share Christ boldly. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 through 5. I have a lot of Scripture today. Okay, better to listen to God's word than my word. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. It's not about what I say every Sunday. It's about the word of God that comes out of me, or the Holy Spirit working through me, or whoever else is on this stage speaking and bringing God's word. That, that, that's what it's about. It, it comes from His power and the power to speak Christ boldly. None of us can do this on our own. Just like we talked last week about the disciples. They could not do anything right, let alone anything right before the Holy Spirit came into their lives. They didn't have understanding. They were consumed by fear. We saw Peter deny Christ three times. Everyone was kind of shaken in their own shoes, and, and they just didn't quite get it until that moment when the Holy Spirit fell. And then when the Holy Spirit fell, it's just like you supercharged every single one of them. Can you just see Peter walking out of that, that upper room and out in the streets, and I mean just started stomping and spitting and preaching Jesus, and 3,000 people got saved, and it's just like, boom. Boom. Just like he walked up and ripped open the shirt, and there was the big S, and said, let's get it. Let's go. I got something to say, and what I have to say, you need to hear. And there was boldness in that. There was no more denying Christ. It was accepting Christ and all that he had done in their lives, talking about his his 
the, his death on a cross, the resurrection, in, in the face of knowing that they were going to be ridiculed, condemned, and probably even killed, which ultimately he was. Didn't matter. The fear was gone. Because they had received the power that God had given them for the specific purpose of sharing Christ only. See, I can't speak on my own. My words mean nothing. My words mean nothing. Anyone could get up here and, 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 and give a speech. They could. Anyone, you could do, you say, I couldn't do that. Yes, you could. You could go home and you could work something out just like you worked out. You know, my daughters have been in speech class having to give these speeches and, and, and not trying to pick on them for, you know, I'm not picking on you, but I listen to your speeches and it's good. Something they say, I can't speak in front of people. They might be recording it, but people are still watching it. So it helps them. You could do it. If my daughters could do it, you could do it. You could go home and you could put something together. You could come up on the stage on a Sunday morning and you could deliver something. We could all do that. But it is not our own words. It is directed by the Holy Spirit and that means everything. It's time for Christians to allow themselves to become immersed in the power and share Christ in this community boldly. 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 And that's more than inviting people to church, by the way. I push you to invite people. I push you to, to give people a chance to say yes, and we should do that. You should do that. But this is more than that. It's more than that. It's just about having that. I went to visit a friend the other day. A friend that almost met his maker a few days ago. And I stood there in that hospital room with him, and, and you, boy, you just have that feeling, you know, just that, and we talked about all kinds of different things until finally I just, I just, you know, you just get to that point, and, 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 and guys, it's, even for me, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable just to open that conversation about God up and, and begin, it's just uncomfortable. But you just get to that place where you're like, man, I got to say something or get out of this room. And so I just said, hey, how are you and God? And then the conversation just began. I went there to check on him, but more than that, I went there to make sure that him and God were okay. And through our conversation, I believe he is. That blesses me. Just... I could have not walked out of that room and went on about my day or my evening or my weekend and not have gotten to that place. But I couldn't have done that on my own. I can promise you that. Because the whole time I'm standing there in that room, I just, it's that urging, it's that, it's that, you need to say something. Ron, don't miss this opportunity. This is why you're here. I mean, it was over and over and over and over and over again. Guys, I get that it's scary, but sharing Christ, sharing your life with people, it matters. It could be the difference in someone's eternity. It could. And that's, that's a big deal. See, when you don't know what to speak, Jesus will give you the words. The Holy Spirit, this bulldozer. When fear has consumed you, he will give you the courage. When you don't know who to speak to, he will not only show you, but he'll direct you. And again, just like Peter allowed himself on that day to be immersed, thousands of lives can be changed. When we're immersed in this power, we won't be immersed in what other people think. It won't matter. It won't matter. The second thing we'll talk about today, the Holy Spirit gives you power when you're weak. When you're weak. Romans 8 verse 26 says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and words that, cannot, that words cannot express. Too many ways to count here in this one. He does pray for us. Watch what the Bible says. We don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and words that words cannot express. The Holy Spirit prays on our behalf when we're weak. Sometimes we just get to that place where either we don't know what to say or we just feel like we're too tired, we're just too fatigued, just spiritually, mentally, whatever. It's just like, ah! Anybody ever got there? You ever been there where you're just so 
frustrated or, or just the circumstances just so much and you're just like, I, I don't know what else to say, God. I don't know what else to pray because I just, and just, oh, it's frustrating. It is, it's frustrating. But we have this key, sometimes just sit down and zip it. Just sit down and be quiet and just let the, the, the presence of God and this Holy Spirit just come on, immerse you and let him take care of it. Have you ever done that and just had this overwhelming peace? Just, huh? And it's just like, oh, that is just great. Right? It's just like sitting in a hot tub after a long day. You're just kind of like, oh. Really? It's just kind of that feeling, just, just like he takes it away from you. Well, in those moments where we don't know where it's going to come from, when we don't have the words to say, when we're tired, when we're this, when we're that, and he just says, I got this. Just relax. Just, just sit back and, and just relax. I, I got this. See, again, many of us, we put our gloves on and get our shovel. We work as hard as we can in our own power. We get tired. We get worn out. Get bombarded with life and loss and hurt and pain, confusion, struggles, and our strength is gone. But when you're weak, through God's Spirit, you're made perfect. When we get to the end of our strength, the Holy Spirit is strong where we cannot be strong. He does that for all of us. I believe with everything inside of me today that if you're weak, if you walked in this building today weak, if you walked in this building just struggling, not really knowing exactly what to do, where to go, what direction, how to pray, how to believe, what, what, whatever it may be, the Holy Spirit can be your strength if you let him. The power that comes with that, with him, it, 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 it's there for you. You may be a parent and you're going, man, I don't know what I'm going to do with these kids. <laughs> really? And that, I'm I'm serious. You may get to that moment, it's like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I don't know, what, you know how we're going to get through this. Just whew. lay the shovel down and pick up the bulldozer. Climb on that thing and say, okay, Holy Spirit, let's go. Speak to me. Teach me. Teach me how to be a better parent. Teach me understanding. Teach me how to discipline. Whatever it may be, just teach me right now. Help me in this. Help my kids. Speak to my kids. Immerse my kids. But we try to fix it and we try to do it on our own. The Holy Spirit can give you wisdom. Maybe you have you know, some kind of presentation or a school or work. and you, you know, I, can't, I can't do this. I panic. I freeze. My voice will shake my heart. That's the Holy Spirit. And where you're weak, he will be strong. Maybe you have a sin in your life. Maybe you have this addiction that just continually you're battling over and over and over and over again. And you're battling with your gloves and your shovel. Lay down the gloves and the shovel. Jump in the bulldozer and begin to deal with it. Listen, there ain't nothing wrong with trying to work out, you know, those problems and issues in our lives. But, but guys, we have got something so powerful that will help us with that. That will help you in your struggle and help pick it up. Pick it up. It's right there. And he's right here. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So it's the power of the Holy Spirit will give you power to share Christ boldly. He'll also give you the power when, when you're weak. And number three, the Holy Spirit gives you the power to have hope in a hopeless world. It gives you a power. The Holy Spirit gives you power to have hope in a hopeless world. Romans 15 says, Verse 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That so you may overflow with hope, not just enough, overflow more than enough by the power of the Holy Spirit. So many Christians today missing out on this opportunity to overflow not overflowing with hope. We have limited hope. For example, if we put our hope in anything besides God, our hope is going to be limited. If you put your hope in your spouse to get you through, and that's your hope is going to be limited. Even as awesome as your spouse may be, as great as your marriage may be, as, as awesome as that, your hope is limited. 
You put your hope in family, it's limited. You put your hope in finances, it's limited. It's limited. It can only take you so far. You put your hope in yourself, it's still limited. Well, I know how to fix things. You might know how to fix some things, but you don't know how to fix all things. It's limited. The only thing, the only thing that keeps that from being unlimited is, is when we put our hope and faith and trust in God. Completely, completely. So if you're hurting today, if you're afraid, you put your hope in God. Let him overflow in your life with joy and hope by his Holy Spirit. Let's say that you lose your job. Continue to put your hope in God. He'll be your provider. That doesn't mean to sit on your tail and don't go look for another one. It just means that God's going to take care of you in that process. He will provide for you even when you may not see where the provision is going to come from. You keep your hope and your faith and trust in God. You keep doing what he's asking you to do. It, he's going to provide. If you find out you're sick or someone is sick, put your hope and trust in God. If you find yourself worried about tomorrow, put your hope in God and let the Holy Spirit be your comforter. If you lose someone you love as much as it hurts, we don't have to grieve like there's no hope. We have to grieve like there's no hope. There's always hope. There's always hope. When you know God, there's always hope. Sometimes we just walk away. We put our hope in God and he promises of the resurrection, the glory eternal in heaven. If you're hurting, they put your hope in God. Scripture says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope with the power of the Holy Spirit. And number four this morning as we close. I know this has been a little bit different kind of message. I understand that this is a setup, but you guys don't want me preaching for two and a half hours, so you're going to take this one for what it is. Go back and listen to it this week on the app or on the YouTube channel. Pull all of the scripture and all of these things back in as we begin to dive next week. This is important. It's extremely important. The Holy Spirit gives you power to experience all, everyone say all, all, all the fullness of God. Gives you the power to experience all, say that again, all. the fullness of God. Not just parts. But see what happens with us is we pick out the parts that we want to experience. I want this one, and I want this one, and I'll, I'll take a little bit of that, God, and I'll take just a little bit of this. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit gives us the power to experience all. I think I said this last week, and I'll say it again. Really, who wouldn't want all that God has? Why would we want to stop short? Why would we want to stop short? Why would we want to just say, God, I want some of this that I just don't want? If, if he's offering it, in fact, he's already given it. We just have to accept it. We look at the lives of so many Christians and we just see something that really doesn't look much different than the rest of the world. Still hurting, still addicted, still filled with worries, broke, struggling, struggling in marriages, no faith, no victory, no power. That doesn't mean, and then I just, just to speak, it doesn't mean bad things aren't going to happen. It doesn't mean struggles aren't going to happen. It's just like we're trying to do this whole thing with the, with the shovel in our gloves. It's just no power. Some people today don't really understand who God is and what he has for them. The Holy Spirit will give you power to experience all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, verse 16, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being. Verse 17 says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power, power together. Paul's praying for people to have power. You pray for somebody. This is a, oh, here we go, Sue, here's the soapbox. Sue told me this morning, she said, I like your soapboxes. So you're, you're getting this one because of Sue today. This one just came out. Are you praying for other people to have power? Paul praying in this letter to the church of Ephesus. He said, I pray that you have power. Are you praying for someone else to have power? You pray for your spouse to have power. Your kids to have power. You pray for this church to have power. You pray for me to have power? Power. And we 
need to be praying for, we need to be praying the power of God over people's lives. The power of God. In life, and struggles, and situations, and opportunities. Power. Together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Verse 19. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. All of it. Paul is basically saying, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power. Why? Because you need it. (laughs) You need it. I need it. We need it together. We need it. Have you ever just wondered, is there any more to Christianity than what I've experienced? Have you ever just thought that? Is there more to this? Is there more to God than what I've seen or experienced? Is there more than just going to church? Is there more? Is there more to worship than just singing songs? There is, isn't there? There's more than Rick playing that bass guitar. A lot more, he says. There's more. It's more than words on a screen. By the way, we're working on this projector. I know it looks a little weird, but just we're fixing it. But there's you could take all of this away. You could take everything off the screens and every instrument off of the stage, and there's still more to worship than what you see today. But what are you doing with it? We ask the question, is there more? Is there more of God in worship? But what are you doing to experience more? sometimes we just and we, and we do this we just we just it's just like we come in here and we stand here and it's just like okay god move god said i am moving you're just not experiencing it ah. i know that's bold but that's real if you want more do more I'm okay where I'm at. Maybe you are okay where you're at. But I just like I asked the question earlier today. Why, wouldn't you want more? Why, why would you? Why would we not want to experience all that God asked for us? Why? Why would we want to stop short? As individuals, as a church. Why? All the fullness of God. All the fullness of God. the fullness there's got to be more and the reason I know there always has to be more is because number one why would he have sent the Holy Spirit to us I mean look at all the amazing things that the disciples got to experience Jesus could have died and went up to heaven and they could have lived the rest of their life and just said man that was awesome that was great, women. We got to walk with this guy. We got to see him raise someone from the dead. Ain't nobody ever, nobody's ever seen that. We got to watch him raise from the dead. And then just sit back and go, man, that's just great. But Jesus said, there's more. As awesome as that was, there's more. And I'm going to show you more. And that's what he did. All the fullness of God. The fullness of God. But to experience His power, you must first experience Jesus. Jesus.